All right, she's back. By popular demand, our fairy pod mother. You had questions and concerns. Well, she's here to answer the questions and alleviate your concerns. Here she is, Miss Margaret Carey. Ask T, ask T. If you have a question, ask T, ask T. Hello, Skywalkers. This is Margaret Carey, the official fairy pod mother on Skywalking Through Neverland. Some of you may even know me as the animator's reference model for Tinkerbell in Walt Disney's original Peter Pan film. I am here to give advice, wisdom, and spread to you my faith, trust, and pixie dust. Or if you just want to ask me a question about my career or anything from Tinkerbell's point of view, then I'm here for you too. Let's start things off today with a question from Jim Pruey, who asks a real thinker of a question. In 1967, the movie Dr. Doolittle introduced the world to a man who could talk to the animals. If you could talk to just one animal, what animal would it be? (laughs) And he says, I would talk to a squirrel and tell them to stay out of the traffic. I think that's good thinking. Talk to an animal. Uh, Well, I do talk to animals. I really do. I love animals. Tell you a story. This happened uh, to me when I was working on the Charlie Ruggles show at ABC. It was one of the early live shows. And our um, sponsor was Dr. Ross Dog Food. And if you remember Hal Smith, who played Otis Campbell, the drunk, on the Andy Griffith show, well, he was the announcer on our show, the Ruggles show. And they had brought in a little dog, a little larger than a chihuahua. And uh, Dr. Ross was wonderful about animals, but the little dog hadn't eaten all day. It had water, it had everything, no problem. So 7.30 at night came the commercial, and Hal was telling about Dr. Ross dog food, And they put down the dog food on camera, and the little dog just laps it up, you can imagine, and then regurgitates all over Hal and the bench, live. So Hal, talking to animals, picked up the little dog and held it close to him and looked into its eyes and says, you just love Dr. Ross. You ate that too fast, didn't you? Oh, I'm sorry, but you like the liver part, don't you? And so help me, this little dog on camera nodded up and down in agreement with what Hal said. And the dog was fine. It just, it (laughs) hadn't eaten, so therefore... So we do talk to animals. We talk to them all the time, particularly the ones that we have in our homes. And I love it. And you know, one of the people who got that going, one of the geniuses who changed the world when it came, his name is Walt Disney. He gave us another look at animals in all the wonderful shows and movies that he did. Thank you for that question. Now let's hear from a five-year-old, Andrew Dellinger, who has to know, his question is, is Tinkerbell real? Oh, you know, that's a very deep question, and people have been asking questions like that. And a five-year-old, good for you. Let me ask you, maybe I can put it in a way so you can understand. Let's just say that you have a great-grandma who lives 2,000 miles away from you in a big city. And your parents tell you about this great grandma. And her name is, let's say, Patricia. And great grandma Patricia is wonderful. And she likes to eat oatmeal. And she likes to drive her car. And she likes to go to movies. And you have never met great grandma Patricia But do you believe she's real? I believe she's real. I believe Tinkerbell, whom you've never met, I believe she's real too. So maybe that answers your question. There are lots of people that I'm told stories about that I'm so happy that I know about them and that I believe they're real. Andrew's 
eight-year-old sister, Zoe Dellinger, also has a question. Well, it came in all the family. She wants to know, are you, that meaning me, really as tiny as Tinkerbell? Or did they use, <laughs> oh, so smart eight-year-olds, special effects? Well, I know that you think of special effects, Zoe, but I'm going to answer it in a different fashion. All right. Let's just say that a grown-up in your family, a dad, a mama, a uncle, an aunt, is six feet tall, okay? And they hand you a pencil, and they hand you a piece of paper, and they said, draw a picture for me. And you would, would you say, no, I need about 16 more pieces of paper, and it's going to go all the way across the floor because I have to make this person as tall as they are. No, you draw them the size that will fit the piece of paper. And you do it very well. And the great artists at Disney, Mark Davis and so many of them, drew Tinkerbell so how she would fit into the scene and the backgrounds. So you might call it special effects, but I call it artistic genius. Is that okay with you? Because when I see her up there, sometimes, well, I never feel small because I'm five foot two, and little kids come up to me and look at me and they said, are you really Tinkerbell? And their mothers are smiling, you know, like, uh, tell them yes. And I look at them and I say, no, I'm too tall to be Tinkerbell. But they drew me as Tinkerbell with all my actions. So that is very, very special. And you might say, a special effect. Well, Skywalkers, that's all the tink time we have for today. I would like to thank Jim Pruey and Andrew and Zoe Dellinger for sending in their questions and their concerns. Oh, almost forgot that. If you would like me to spread some faith, trust, and pixie dust, Send your questions to share at skywalkingthroughneverland.com. Bye now. Ask T, ask T. If you have a question, ask T, ask T.